Hey everybody, it's Missy again. Thanks so much for stopping by today. I have a new layout to share for Hip Kit Club and I'm using the 2020 December kits. And I wanted to try to use these three pattern papers. I just thought they were really pretty and I wanted to try to incorporate them together on a layout. And these are all exclusive. All the papers are exclusive this month, so you can only get them at Hip Kit Club. I'm also going to use a cut file, and I'm going to use this one. It says very warm and cozy. And then I have this really funny photo strip of my youngest daughter acting crazy when she's supposed to be asleep. And these are terrible photos because it was dark in her room, and I was using my phone, and I would turn on the flash, and then, you know, there was like a delay because it was pitch black in her room because she refuses to have a nightlight. She likes it pitch dark. So the pictures are blurry. The top one's not too bad because she's actually sitting still, but then she starts to flail around and act silly and jump all around and come toward me. And so the photos got really blurry, but I don't care. I love these photos. And this is a good example of using bad photos because the memory is so awesome. And uh, I find a way to make them look a little bit better when they're blurry like this is to convert them to black and white. So that's what I did here, and I'm going to use them and figure out a way to incorporate them onto this cut file or around the cut file. And I'm just doing some fussy cutting here. I fussy cut some of those flowers and leaves, and I cut the bottom photo off because I wanted to tuck the word warm kind of underneath the second photo and on top of the third photo because I like how it kind of just fits right there. And uh, I wanted you to be able to see all the photos. So that's why I cut the third one off so I can space it down a little bit. And I have no idea really what I'm doing. I'm just experimenting here with some of the embellishments. I've got one of those envelopes. I've got some chipboard pieces. I'm going to work in some of those die cut, or not die cut, fussy cut flowers. Um, I've got some hearts. Just all kinds of things. I'm going to play around and see what may look good where. Try to uh, use various colors. And at this point, I, I don't want to do any mixed media yet because I want to figure out what I'm going to be using on this photo strip because I know I want a lot of layers and I want to go ahead and build that first because I'm not sure what color I want to put on the background. So I'm going to go ahead and build my layers here and I'm going to use some white tissue paper behind the photos and then I pulled out some of the pocket life cards that match these pattern papers. And I'm just going to start to build some layers. Um, sometimes I just do a layer of tissue paper and that's it. And then sometimes I like to layer a bunch of stuff behind there. And so that's what I'm going to do. And I'm pulling colors from that striped paper mostly. I've got pink, that golden yellow color, uh, that darker blue color, the softer lighter blue color. And yeah, this is just, I wasn't even sure if I was liking this the more I started to layer. But once it's all said and done, and then I work it back with the cut file, I think it works nicely. And I, I wanted to use that striped paper, but um, I wasn't sure how much. The same, the same thing here with this plaid paper. Uh, I just started tearing and cutting and building layers and uh, just see how it looked. And you're going to be able to see all of these papers just small bits of it not too much but you'll be able to to get the effect of each of these pattern papers so i'm going to try to do the same thing with the the single photo layer the same things under that but it's not attached so i have to kind of do it separately and i thought this cut file was cute mainly because of the way it's stacked and when i first saw it i thought okay i kind of want to do a photo strip with this i kind of instantly got an idea of how i wanted to size and arrange my photos but you know i live in florida and i don't really have a lot of winter photos or you know photos of my kids or me or my husband like bundled up in jackets so a lot of these the things in the kits this month are hard for me to use so i'm trying to think of ways to make them usable for me in my photos. And I thought, very warm and cozy. That's kind of a fun title for some bed photos. Although these photos were taken in June. Yeah, I don't think she was very warm. She she <laughs> she was cozy until I went in there to check on her. She realized, oh, mom's here, let's play. 
And uh, I'm going to add some words onto the title to make it fit our situation and, and these photos here. But that's where my title is going to begin. And that's what inspired me to dig up these photos from this summer. I cut the title on textured white cardstock knowing that I wanted to color it with some of the shimmers that we get in the color kit. So I'm going to go ahead and coat it with a little bit of clear gesso because my idea is to kind of add color to the bottom half of each of the words to kind of create, I guess you could say an ombre effect. And uh, so I want to be able to blend some of the colors together. So I'm just using my fingers there and a little bit of the Art, fi Art Basics Finibear um, clear gesso on that. I'm going to let that dry. And I kind of think I have the layering down. I like how that's looking. I like that it's creating a lot of dimension and texture. And I'm going to start to kind of go ahead and glue it together because if I keep moving it around, I'm going to start to lose pieces and forget where I put them. And I make sure there's enough space in between the second and third photo so warm can kind of fit right in there. And then I want that envelope kind of off center so you can see the little circle part with the string that you wrap around it. I want that visible up at the top because I love those envelopes. I like the little string, how you can just loop it around and I love that. So I'm going to make sure that's up at the top and I want the photo strip when I work it onto the background and glue it down, I want it to be a little off center. So I don't want it to be perfectly straight. I want it to be a little bit tilted to the left. Just, you know, because of my love of crooked things, the title is going to be straight, but the photo strip is going to be tilted a little bit. And I wind up not using that coral color circle chipboard frame. I had originally pulled that out to use and <clears throat> in the end, I don't even wind up using that. But this is basically the design. Um, it's just a matter of tucking in the little things and then deciding on the background. I'm thinking that I'm going to go with blue or aqua on the background because I feel like I've got a lot of pink going on. And um, because we get three colors in the color kit, we get a blue a yellow golden color and then a pinkish coral color and I'm actually going to wind up using all three of those colors today. So I've got this down. I pretty much have the photo strip layer all glued together so I can move that as one big piece which makes the rest of this a lot easier. Um, I went ahead and coated most of the background and uh, with clear gesso and this is what is this? Smooth, yeah, smooth, thick white cardstock. It's the, the marshmallow from Basil. Um, I cut the cut file on textured, but this is not textured. Uh, same clear gesso on the background. And I want to do some mixed media behind the title to make that white title stand out. And then a little bit on the upper left area. So we're just going to start. I'm going to do some mixing and matching like I did last week. I'm going to start with the Oaky Bear Blue, which is kind of a more of a darker on the navy side, grayish, bluish, slate blue color, I guess you could call it. And I'm going to mix it with the Mad Hatter Mint Lindy's spray that we got a long time ago. It's more of a green color. And when you mix those two together, it creates a really pretty light minty aqua color. And I'm going to let that kind of run and blend. I'm using a brush, adding some water. This is just sort of my go-to thing lately. I just add the color and start to turn the paper different directions, use a brush, use my finger even to kind of spread the color. And some of it's going to go behind the photo strip, but that's okay. I want it to kind of go in this direction. So it's higher on the left and then lower on the right. Because on the right, that's where the chunk of the title is going to go. And I want that color to kind of show in between and all around the words. So this is just where we're going to begin. Um, the beauty of the gesso, if some of this goes in places I don't want it to go, or if I feel like I've done too big of a section, I can just use a napkin and dab some of it up because that's what gesso does. It kind of acts as a barrier between all this paint and water 
and the paper so it doesn't just soak right through and dry right away. You have plenty of time to kind of blend it and move it around, dab it up if you don't like it, and uh, I love that effect. It eventually does dry and makes it harder to blend, but you've got plenty of time here. As long as you keep it wet and you keep it moving, you're going to have plenty of time. Now I have found over, you know, trial and error that when you do add water to Lindy's or Shimmer's, it's obviously going to make the color lighter because you're diluting it, but it's also, it may affect the shimmer factor because both the spray and the shimmers that I'm using here are shimmery. And uh, sometimes that may be affected when you add water. So, you know, if you're going for a shimmery finish, take that into consideration. Uh, most of the time I'm going just for the watercolor effect. And I actually feel like this is still pretty shimmery when it's done because I didn't add too much water. You can kind of see here it's almost dry, but I think it's still pretty shimmery. But uh, yeah, the minute you start to add water to things, obviously you're making it thinner. So the color is going to lighten up and that's okay because I like the way the water or I like the effect of the water, what it does, how it makes the colors run and blend because the shimmers here, when you open up the blue and the uh, the pink one that's called Naughty or Nice, if you've never used shimmers before, these inklings, they come in a little hard cake. So you have to add water to them to activate the paint. And when you activate it with the water and you let it sit, and then when you can actually stir the entire pot of paint, it thickens up. And so when you add it to the paper, it's it's not like watery watercolor, you know, so if you want it to thin out and move around the page a little bit more, you want to add some water to it. So, but yeah, I like how this is looking. I brought the photo strip back and added some directly where I wanted it kind of closer to the edges because I wanted it to be a little bit darker there, more of this navyish blue color. And I'm going to do some splatters here. I'm coming back with the Oki Bear Blue again, just watering it down a little bit more in the lid. And then just using my brush there to add some splatters, which I love to do. And if you want small, teeny, tiny splatters, just do the technique that I was doing there. Like hold it close and then tap it with your other finger. And if you want big splatters, I would get the bristles really, really wet with the color hold it up high and then use your fingers to squish down like in a downward motion on the bristles and it will make a big nice blobby splatter. So it just depends on which splatters you want. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to work on the title now. I'm going to mix the third color we get, which is called Christmas Cheer. Now this one is different than the Inklings. This one is called Shimmers because this is the original Shimmers paints and it comes already with liquid mixed in and this one is very glittery when it dries. I'm talking the shimmer factor is off the charts and is gorgeous. This color it looks yellow but when it dries it is more of a golden yellow. So if you're looking for some gold for this month this is really really pretty and I'm gonna mix this. I, I was originally just gonna use this color but I'm going to mix in the pink shade that we get, which is called Naughty or Nice. And it's kind of, it's the same style as the blue. Like I said earlier, it comes hard and you have to mix it with water, which I've already added some in there. And um, yeah, so I'm going to mix these two colors together and it's going to create more of a, not completely orange because I don't add, add too much of it. Um, but it's going to kind of match the pink shades back on the layout whenever I put it back on, you'll kind of see how I think it works really nicely. But I'm just adding some color to the bottom of each of the letters here and then using my finger and a little bit of water to kind of smudge it because I want the top half of each word to stay white. I just like that effect. I think it gives it some shadowing and some dimension and it's going to look really pretty on top of the blue background. So this is another idea in using the color kit. You know, you don't always have to use it on a background. You could use it to paint a title. You could paint a cut file. Um, yeah, it's fun to mix and match the colors. It would be fun to create a green color by mixing the Christmas cheer with the Oki Bear Blue. I love how that looks. I think I mix and match that perfectly because 
you get some of the coral color, you get some of that yellow golden color, which both colors are in the, uh, the photo strip there. Okay, so this is something I wind up changing. I thought I wanted a darker blue color behind the word warm, so I just use the shimmers to paint that little midsection there in between the photos, but I wind up changing that, and I'll show you here in a minute. I did go back and add some more splatters to the background, added some big splatters, but I, I like how this is looking. See how shimmery? Oh, love it, love it, love it. I decided I did not like how that looked, so I just tore another piece of that of that plaid paper and then just kind of tucked it back under there, so you can't even tell that I did that. But yeah, I just, I don't know, didn't like it. It kind of broke up the photo strip, and I wanted to keep that plaid plaid look going all the way down. So now I'm going to work on adding in all those little bits and pieces that I picked out earlier. Um, some leaves, some flowers. Um, I've got the same chipboard pieces, the hearts. I'm going to try to work those in and see what might look good where. And just work on the embellishing phase. There are a ton of chipboard stickers this month. Um, lots of die cuts, lots of floral die cuts. Uh, I don't use any of the puffy star stickers. I used a lot of those last week. I don't use any of those this week, but I do use several chipboard pieces here. I'm going to use that little label that says remember, and I'm going to use it right there on the side. So at this point, I'm looking for things that are in the color family that I'm using here. Either something aqua, something gold, something um, on that reddish coral, like the darker, it's not red, but it's kind of a deeper coral, because there's a piece of that in that striped paper. Um, so I found that little circle that says relax. It's a chipboard piece. I'm going to use that. I am going to add in some thread. I went with the dark blue, so I'm going to add in a little bit of that over on the left, kind of underneath where that flower and the leaves are. And then I'm going to add in some more over on the right. And this is going to be kind of hidden uh, behind the title. I try to put it up close, or not up close, up higher above the title, but decided to move it down a little bit. And you can see it in real life. It's just kind of hard to see it here on camera, but it does add some texture and it does darken that area just a little bit more to help the title stand out just a bit more. So I'm going to start to glue some things together here. I'm going to glue down that chipboard piece and then I'm ready to glue this down to the background but then I realized things were not even because I had some chipboard under there so I went ahead and pulled out some random bits of adhesive foam to put behind the entire strip so I can pop that up and everything is the same height as the chipboard. So I'm going to go ahead and get that glued down. And I'm using Scotch Tacky Glue. I always get that question. Um, Scotch Tacky Glue, and I put that in the bottle. That's a fine liner bottle. You can get those on Amazon uh, or also at Hobby Lobby. If you get them at Hobby Lobby, they're in the model car section. Um, adding some adhesive foam to the actual cut file as well. And I think this creates some amazing dimension, shadowing, and texture. And I love this effect. And I feel like I needed to pop the title up since I popped up everything else, but this just makes it so much more visible, I think. It just kind of comes to life. I love dimensional adhesive. I think I use so much of that stuff on every layout. It just, it brings things to life. It gives it some 3D effects, and I love it. I'm going to use a couple of these clear... They're almost acetate. They're really thick uh, stickers. It's a st clear sticker sheet of basically celebrating the new year type of things. And these look like little um, firework type shapes, but they match. There were several in colors that matched. So I kind of just cut them in half and used them as little layers behind the, uh, the photo strip there. I used uh, an aqua color one, a coral colored one, this little one here that's yellow golden color. They just matched really well, so added some of those straight to the background, just tucked them in as little layers there. And then I have uh, the chipboard hearts. I want to put something 
over on the right side of the title. So I'm going to pull in another one of those yellow flowers that I fussy cut in the beginning since I've got one over by the word warm. Pull another one over there and then another little cluster of chipboard there kind of representing all the colors. And then here's where I add on to my title. I go back to these exclusive dark blue mini alphas and I love these. These are perfect for smaller titles and things. So I've got very warm and cozy and then I'm going to add and wild and crazy because that's the true definition of my youngest child. Yeah, I do go back and add the word and to the left of wild because I felt like there was just that little chunk of space there. So I'm going to add that in. But um, I love how that looks. Uh, these are some exclusive puffy alpha, nope, not alpha, word phrase type stickers. I'm going to use a couple of those. This one fits perfect right under and crazy. And it says, uh, I think something like December 2020 memories or something like that. And you know, it just occurred to me, I don't know why, I think it says December. Yeah, I didn't take these photos in December. These photos are in June. Hmm. Oh, well. <laughs> it's done now. <laughs> I'm not, not going to change it. I just now realized that. Yeah, I even stamped June on the date. What was I thinking? I think it says December. Yep, I think it does. Oh, well. You know what? Sometimes you just aren't thinking straight. Moving on. It's glued down now. Oh well. I'm going to add some splatters. I'm going to go back to the Christmas cheer color and do a little bit of splattering of that. Love that. Very, very pretty color. Highly, highly recommend it. And you're going to get lots of glittery effects from that. And I'm going to do my journaling right underneath the title here. And I'm going to use my metallic gold pen because it's perfect for this. I've got lots of gold things going on or yellow golden, I guess you could say. And I thought I was done, but I decided to add some more things here. I am almost finished though. I did take a break and then I did add some more of the dark blue thread at the, at the top of the title and then some yellow golden thread kind of under the strip there. And I forgot that I really wanted to use this part of uh, this pocket life card that says embracing the chaos because this is too perfect of a phrase for these crazy photos and my child because she's the definition of chaos so yeah i'm going to use that kind of as a little divider of the photos right there because i felt like that was a perfect spot to do that and then this little spot here says 2020 highlights i liked how that looked it matched i'm going to cut it really small and then add that to the bottom right there And yeah, that's finally the end. I love how this turned out. I love all the dimension and all the shadowing and I love the colors. And I really think my favorite part of this is the title because I like that it's, it's just fun. I don't know. I had a good time making that. Oh, it doesn't say December. It says reflections from 2020. Maybe I'm not as crazy as I think, or maybe I am. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway, here are all the close-ups. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I, uh, I loved making it. I hope it gave you some ideas, uh, something to try with this particular cut file. This particular cut file also comes, I think, with the letters open. So you can cut the outline of it and then back it with pattern paper or something like that. That would be fun to do. But yeah, let me know if you have any questions. And I hope you guys have a great week. And I will see you in my next video.